Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. We've got Tim and Jonathan um, with us as usual. And there's been actually a couple of um, developments uh, of interest and something mysterious happening as well, which I might ask Jonathan and Tim's knowledge on. Um, it's to do with Brazil. They've they've made an incursion, but we're not going to talk about it yet. We'll see, we'll see that later because we normally look at the action first. And also... Um, would you Adam Adam and Eve it um, as a player that were totally overlooked and they've become pretty big so we'll have a look at them later in the meantime I just before we came on took out a short stack from Egypt so they're just popping out the paperwork um, popping out the paperwork there's another way of saying that but popping out the woodwork that's it they I've got basically three territories left to take and they've been hiding in some of the last territories. That happens in Algeria, and then they sort of pop out at the last minute when I'm about to find them, and then they cause problems. So there was a, a, a very um, advanced fighting, uh, like tank and a, an infantry, and 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 they went for this this infantry. Look, and he's barely got any life left. So he's going to Warsaw. Seven point five out of thirty near Aswan, near the um, Suez Canal, and the. My, my fighters helped save them um, and actually if I show you where that troop's going to be going in Warsaw I don't know if you've seen that I'm, I'm sort of squatting there Jonathan I've got a stack of two two tanks that have 24.9 out of 94 hit points so they're, they're growing in hit points but desperately low and then these mechanized infantry were much much lower and they're gaining ground six hit points a day each and they're on 42.8 out of 90 hit points so someone else will be joining them and uh, that's a valuable hospital really it's going to be um, giving me a basically a big stack um, back in full health before long uh, it won't take long and this is the muster point um, I keep getting reinforcements coming in there we go we've got um oh, I'm leaving the mechanized infantry there got a full oh a full health rocket launcher I'm not sure how that's happened because I'm pretty sure I was sending a rocket launcher there that was almost out of health, but might be mistaken. There's one over here in Morocco. Check this one out. This rocket launcher has 1.9 out of 18 health. So um, he got jumped by someone in, in Algeria again. You know, I was able to save him. So we've got some pretty pretty low health units, but I'm, I'm taking them out and and putting them in the hospital. I've, I've taken over most of Sudan and I'll have that wrapped up by the morning. Um, uh. It was pretty easy. There wasn't really much m resistance in Khartoum. And then if I go into... Is this Chad? I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going through Chad now and I've got a couple of stacks. So I'm taking the stack over from Sudan. I've got two main battle tanks, a combat recon and a mechanized with reasonable health. Um... Th these two arrows here on each side at the top they're two separate infantry units I'm doing some land grabbing with so I'll extend that land grab and we'll probably take quite a lot overnight I've got the stack of three um, rocket launchers supporting the attack uh, but so far not, not come across a huge amount maybe their forces are further in the south and I'm just thinking more widely and strategically uh, once I've taken Chad and South Sudan yeah it'll just be a question of taking Nigeria, Cameroon, Congo, Kenya, Ethiopia. I have to think in what order. Probably Nigeria and Ethiopia. And then create a muster point. Maybe on each side. Or maybe just down in the south. If I can get um, take over an airport or something. And then and then just either go in on each side of Cameroon and Kenya. Or just uh, in from one side or, or in from the top. We'll have to see how that emerges and where my troops end up. I've got plenty of troops now. They're all coming through. Um, so I'm just going to see if I, how quickly I can take Africa and then um, when I get down to this point this is where the real fun will begin because I've got Angola I think it's Angola isn't it yeah they really spread out so they're going to have some pretty significant forces they're, they're one of the bigger players uh, on the map and oh we've got a live fight with Jonathan let's go straight to you and my god you've got loads of contacts Whoa, up here and, and down here what's going on yeah, um, my strikes have cleared out a lot of Iraqi troops. Um, just scrolling through my feed in the past day, I've had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, 16. 16 kills from the same fighter. And if, if you have a look at him, um, it, it doesn't show up for um, command. for the other units, but the actual the the flight commander he's got like 20, 22 kills. Wherever 23. It is. Very nice. Um, yeah, twenty three. Yeah. yeah um, so I'm, I'm I'm giving him an upgrade. I'm giving him a promotion. And now all of these contacts in Iraq are they're only really around Basra and Avaz now. So I can just move into all of these cities and just like fill out east. Um, and then the the remaining Syrian lands, I'm moving in a lot of troops. So catch catching up with a lot more land, a load more cities. And I found Serbia's big stack. Ooh. They're sitting in Karura. Um, you see that province just outside it. I took on a few, um, like, I think they were like, armoured fighting vehicles and uh, motorised infantry. Killed all of those. But now he's got another eight troops sitting on a city. And this is definitely the the big stack that we came across about, um, oh, crikey, when was it like? A week and a half ago now. Okay, so where, let's go through that again. Where did you see them? Um, when we first started fighting Serbia, we had a stack of um, about 10 troops, including some armoured fighting um, vehicles, uh, I believe, um, yeah. some mechanised and some motorised infantry. And Maybe where have you seen them or... most recently? Um, well, they're, they're in the city. So Which one? We saw them. Uh, Sharura in um, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Let's Saudi find that. Uh, Saudi Arabia, Sharura. Mm. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, there we go. Okay, of course. So, we've, yeah, that's your live battle. I thought it might have just been one infantry. So they've got four mechanized and four motorized troops okay and you've got and, and so he's just he, he retreated back to these cities a while ago and he's, he's just been sitting all of them in this city and he's not really done much with them and now i've come across them and i'm likely to lose all of the special forces uh which is okay i've got some water as, as backup and I'll, I'll be sending in some planes um to in to intervene, but they've all been all the way up on the uh, on the Russian border, um, killing Russian troops. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of travel time and, and a lot to think about with like where I'm keeping my planes now. But yeah, um, generally the expansion's going well and um, gaining a lot of land. Oh, very nice. So yeah, that basically you've not got a big concentration or a big stack down there to take on their big stack so you're just gonna have to yeah you, you're saying you're gonna have to consolidate are you gonna how long will that take do you think um yeah i'm already going quite quickly so i, th I think in two days I'll, I'll have taken the rest of saudi arabia and killed the rest of the um syrians and the serbians and then i'll just be able to i'll, I'll consolidate most likely around kind of baghdad to uh, push east and take Iran and the remnants in Georgia um, and then once all that's done I'll just be uh, face to face with uh, the Mongolian troops Cool, so yeah, I, I was having a look at that earlier it's not going to be long till you bunch up right against Mongolia I mean there's not a lot of territory left especially when we look at what we've taken already um, and you're just growing in in power, so I God, I wonder what's going to be waiting um, in Mon in Mongolia for you. Really, Are they, I mean, surely they're preparing. Yeah, but if you look back at his home cities where you'd expect the most production, he hasn't got much. Um, only like a couple of level two army bases. All his arms industries are like level one or two. Um, so unless it's like a horde of just like level one and two motorized infantry um then there won't be much of a threat yeah he's there's um, a level three army base level two air base in olgi um but otherwise and you can produce quite a lot out of level twos so he's got a level two there level one mm. level two so he's got two level two army bases and a level three so he can probably produce a fair bit. Um, 
I mean, like, like the, the the main concern Another is level. like he's got his rare material city, and he hasn't even built an arms industry on it. Um, and he's had twenty three days to do that, so like he he can't have been researching much. His hourly rare materials probably won't be above like seventy. Um, so he he would have essentially had about half the progress that we we each would have had. Um, cool. Yeah. And then he's, he's annexed a city somewhere down here. I can't find it. I think it's in Afghanistan somewhere. Yeah, um, Kabul, which is actually a rare material city, but still, like, uh, only gives him 519. If he'd been upgrading oh. his, his rare he... material one his home city, he would have had a lot more production, more like 2,000. Yeah, it says Annex City there. Okay, I see what you mean. So he's made some sort of um, attempt. Maybe he doesn't quite realise that arms industries give you more. Probably just doesn't realise that part of the game, and that's why he's gone after those extra raw materials. He's got a level 3 army base and a level 2 air base, so actually he's got two level 3 army bases and two level 2 army bases. So that's interesting. Mm. Okay, and Tim, you've taken Norway and Sweden... Yeah, that's finally done. They're both eliminated. Um, so yeah, probably a day or two for the latest cities that I took to stop to stop burning, and then I can uh, then I can move on with my life. Very nice. Yeah, um, <laughs> and move on Russia. to Russia, I suppose. <laughs> In the comments, someone did ask um, if it was worthwhile you going for Mali and all their territory. Yeah, could be. Um, yeah. So, um, so feel free, because I'm not going to go for that until last. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, yeah, I could just do that and sort of start sweeping across more southwest Africa, kind of meet you around Chad, I suppose, or Cameroon, Congo, somewhere like that. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, that will give me a, a smaller area to focus on. Um, we'll yeah. just see, make it a race to see who can take most land or something. Um, uh, before I do that, I'll probably, I'm going to get an infantry officer just to give my troops a bit more survivability. And um, I'm probably going to look to get mobile radars or SAM turrets, just so I'm not relying on Jonathan's um, yeah. so much. You've yeah. been a bit a bit neglected up north. <laughs> I think you should have said more, but my radar's just been sitting in random places. Um, I mean, if I could just um, have a radar to follow me through Africa, then that'd be that'd be good. One less thing to research, I suppose, but. Um, yeah, all right. I'll, I'll bring this one. Shall see. Yeah, I'll, I'll move them around and then, and then I'll, I'll have a couple in Africa, which I can move between like your uh, both of your territories. Yeah, that'll be great. Your support units have been amazing. It's saved us having to research it all. But like Tim, I'm kind of getting tempted to get some of my own as well. Just um, mm. as we get a bit further through, really. Maybe we should yeah. probably We're have We're going to some. be so spread out um, with, with different battlefronts now that I, I think that's definitely a good idea. Like, we'll, we've been helping each other out, but now we can all just specialise into a, a bit of everything. Yeah, definitely. I've, I've built my first theatre defence, and actually, we talk about the mysterious occurrences. Um, see what you think about this, guys. It's been happening in Paris since um, pretty much since we started playing. Um, I keep having to repair my airbase. Do you know what's going on? <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> where, 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 where is that? Sorry. Paris. Paris. Uh, okay. You, yeah. Someone's uh, someone's probably getting some spies into your city. Oh, um, right. So this is like the next level. Up. This is the next sort of layer to the game. Um, if you click on the Intel tab on the left, and that is basically where you can recruit agents to. Um, go on missions to disrupt things going on in uh, enemy cities, and you can also place counter ops on cities to stop people doing the same to you. Something I've not really done so far this game. Um, oh yeah, you don't you don't find it happens that much. Like not many people do it, but it's probably Brazil or Philippines just just trying to give you some hassle basically without actually going to war with you. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've never noticed it's kind of like that trolling. before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It is, so, uh, yeah. but I've noticed it you might could, be somewhere to spend all this money that we've got accumulating. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I might have yeah. a go at this. So, um, yeah, we just you can just recruit like a ton of agents and then just 
use them. However, me, me and Jonathan have tended to like dub, like get a couple of counter ops on each of our home cities. Um, yeah. That seems to stop it from happening. And also, if they capture an agent, then it does it, it does tell you who's sent it as well. So. Okay. Oh, so I should have a look through all my tasks and stuff. All right, I'll play around with that and see if we can get some some agents going. I've I've just hired a couple. Um, we'll see what happens. Oh, let's go close in on the theater defense. Uh, there it is. Oh, so it's got a big old missile on the back of it, and it's like two different vehicles. Shame we can't go in a bit closer. There, there it is on the um, the image, and that's it. An example of real life. So we've got now um, twelve defense against missiles. Um, and two against planes. So I'll have to get some anti-air and, and boost them up. But um, that's on Paris. I've got the theatre defence system. And then I'll move some down into Madrid and to um, to Marrakesh. I'm, I'm, I'm slowly building up big, bigger stacks. Um, rocket launcher, main battle tank, combat recon, mechanised infantry, motorised infantry, and Jonathan's mobile SAM launcher is on Marrakesh. So that's a really good western defence. Um, and then a bit less in Spain and, and a little, little bit less in France. I'm just going to build up those defensive stacks because, like like you said, Jonathan, we're going to be so spread out um, that we, you know we, we're just going to make sure I've got something in place um, to guard my back. Yeah, sounds good. Oh, and let's check out. So I don't know if you've you've seen um, what Brazil's been doing, but let's go and go and have a look. They've they've made an incursion on the eastern coast of the United States oh, yeah. which was basically Mexican controlled and when I saw that I thought wow that is an active player so w do you think I mean surely that's got to be an active player yeah yeah yeah, yeah for sure so we could ha be having some big trouble and um, if we talk about this um, this other player that we just haven't been following um, and we looked at them yesterday and went oh my god what's going on with that so it's the Philippines um, they've taken over the whole of Asia um, and Australia and Australia and it's a bit daunting yeah. to think how long it might take to, to get boats in between there and, and, and attack them so they've got an incredibly defensive area it, it's it's almost mind boggling and have they just incurred oh no that's Vietnam wonder where they're going next but they they certainly look active so we've got two huge players and then we've got what i would say some more medium-sized players although mongolia is pretty big aren't they and then we've got uh, these guys in south africa um, so we've got quite a lot going on and it'll be really interesting to see when we uh, clash with our first big player and what happens yeah for sure um i mean philippines obviously it's hard to tell without seeing it how many ships he does have but definitely has the infrastructure to be building um, big stacks of ships so I'll need to make sure mine are pretty much maxed out by the time we come across him um, Yeah, be able to match him just having a look around it, yeah, he's got a fair bit of where are, the, where are the home cities, Philippines, there we go okay let's have a look at home cities Oh wow. Okay, army base level 4, air base level 3, naval base level 3, arms industry level 4, hospital, recruiting office, and that's just in Davao City. Oh god, and it's the same in Zamboanga and Cebu and Puerto Princesa and Manila. My god, and he's got a level 5 um, naval base their level four naval base oh my god it, there's some serious infrastructure there isn't there yeah it just depends if he's um really got the resources to actually be able to like build so many simultaneous you know ships or whatever he's whatever he's doing i, I don't know if he can really but is that but is I can't, but. he's annexed taipei so he's annexed uh, oh my god and he's okay oh, yeah. he's annexed Fukuoka, however oh, yeah, that is okay. said. So um, he's um, boosted his electronics and fuel then for the ships. And I'm just yeah. clicking on all the cities I can. Um, oh, and... Um, oh, he really built his arms industry. He's annexed Tanchon. 
he's 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 really built up his arms industries on pretty much every um every occupied city to be fair he's just been pumping production oh my god we're in trouble here if we come across this guy um i'm just seeing well, if there are any more just depends how well he's sort of stricken that balance between sort of you know building the infrastructure for boosting the production and actually sort of using it for mobilizing troops so it's annex singapore you think like if he's got a ton of troops um then maybe when we get to a certain point we should stop expanding and then just focus on our resource production yeah and then because we've got more cities between us then then we'll be able to like beat him in an arms race eventually yeah uh, I wasn't counting as I was going through, but that's about four or five annex cities and an incredibly strong homeland. I, I mean, he's easily stronger than any of us on our own. I'm not sure about us combined, but that is a hell of a competitor. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not invested in Navy. <laughs> it, yeah, definitely. I mean, well, I'll, I'll show you what I'm researching at the moment. So, I'm on the last one of the mechanized, so they'll be maxed out in um, six hours. And I've just started researching uh, cruisers, so they'll they'll be cool to have. Um, we'll look at the it's Tiger class. We'll look at the stats: three against troops, two vehicles, two planes, three helicopters, one missile. But ten against boats and two against subs. So it's really strong against boats, the cruiser. So that's good. And then, um, yeah, not sure what I'll research next. Maybe some sort of air defense. Um, God, I'm just still thinking about the Philippines. We're, we're quite, I mean, we're really quite far away from him, aren't we, over here? Kind of as far as we can get. Yeah. Could incur onto the east coast of Africa, or the, the the what are we on the southeast of the Middle East, and and he could come in through the Suez Canal, so that's going to be a really really critical point to defend with some really big boats. Maybe so. Yeah. Okay. J Djibouti in Ethiopia. And that little strangle point going in, that's going to be really critical. Going to have need ships and um, air defence and rocket launchers and all sorts there. And maybe even some backup armies in, in the surrounding provinces at some po point. Maybe even some theatre defence, depending on, on, on what they're going for. Because they could be going for missiles being quite remote like they are. Hmm. So that's going to be interesting. What are you researching at the moment, Jonathan? Um, yeah, struggling for raw materials. Um, so I'm upgrading my planes to uh, level... Uh, was it level? Two, three, four, five. Um, and upgrading my um, fixed-wing officer. Um, yeah, and then I, I think I just need to focus on some more resource production um, in, in, in the next few days. Um so I might not be able to research anything for a couple of days. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll have my first rocket launch being built soon, and then just building more strikes, and more sun turrets and special forces. It's just I was just looking at locations where we could kind of focus on taking to get a strategic advantage against um, the Philippines. I think Sri Lanka might be a good shout. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, right on the uh, southeast coast of India. Oh yeah, that w that would be a really nice close um, point where you could probably fly a few pa planes from. I guess the um, C Cambodia and Thailand would be pretty interesting to get, but there's a lot of land to get through to get there. Um... Yeah, and Myanmar is in control of parts of China and Thailand as well. Um, but he, he hasn't continued expanding, so I'm not sure if he's still playing the game, but um, he will have a lot of troops just dotted around either way. Um, 
and Philippines, if he wants to expand by the land, he'll he'll have to go through him first. So we might be able to race him to India and Sri Lanka first to get like kind of the um, the foothold on the land. Um, it would be a bold move from him to to go all the way to uh, East Africa. Um, if he was to do that, then we would probably be able to uh, push him out before he got too far. Um, yeah. Yeah, just something, something to keep an eye out on. Maybe even like if we took Diego Garcia, which is southwest of Sri Lanka, and set up a port there and a few ships, then it'll be a good strategic location in, in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> yeah, maybe catch some some of his planes out and send the odd loose loose boat. Yeah, that that's going to be really interesting to get into. I'm going to really look forward to to clashing with that player. I I can't imagine that they'd be inactive after putting in so much effort. Um, so we'll just have to see how they expand and if we can see signs of life. Um, we'll go on the Diplomacy tab. Here we go. So their name is Rascale. Uh, they've got 42 cities and 484 victory points. So we'll, we'll be able to see progress and, and see if they're moving on with that. those stats. If, if, if he gains a city, for example, we'll know he's playing 42. It's ranked 60 as well, so been, he's been playing a while. He's ranked 60? Yeah. What, in yeah. the entire game? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I think yeah. uh, last time I looked, I was ranked 144,000th. So that's a huge player. Okay, so he's really going to be knowing what he's doing. What, what, what Tim, do you mean he's level 60? Um, or actually 60 if I'm wrong. Yeah, rank... Rank six. Yeah, oh. levels level sixty rather. Yeah. Not, yeah, not not quite as scary. First, first sergeant. Okay. Oh um, yeah. So rank sixty, it. first sergeant. Um God he mu yeah, must have been playing the game a lot. Maybe we should start corrupting some of his cities. Screwing with them a little bit. Yeah. Doing some secret agents. Could be worth yeah. it. Did, did you look in the, in, in the, di the different kinds of like ways you can infiltrate a city? No, we haven't had a look yet. We've got um, the intelligence tab open. Uh, okay, you have to... Okay, I've just clicked on the, the button there and it pops up with this other screen. So, um, assign a mission, next action in four hours, five minutes. So, I I've, I've, think I've recruited someone, put them on counter ops. And then I can do something maybe. If if you've got a if you've got a tab open uh, and you just click on a city, it will come up with a separate menu. Um, okay. Kind of just ignore the gold ones at the top. But um, you recruit an agent for ten thousand, and then you can move them between cities. If they're on your city, they count the rocks. Or but if they're on an enemy city, um, you've got three options. You've got um, intelligence, so it, it can tell you what's in a city. Um, corruption, which is uh, you can take their resources and slow down their resources production and affect their morale. And sabotage is um, you can uh, destroy buildings. Uh, that's what I think has been happening to me. I wonder if it's this advanced player that we've, we've got in the map then in the Philippines. Either him or Brazil. I yeah. put my money on the Philippines though. So... Um, Okay, great. We'll get into that and see how it all works. Um, yeah, look forward to it. It can get like really expensive. Um, I think it only costs like a um, like thousand or, or two hundred and fifty per counter ops, but I think you pay one thousand or two thousand per intelligence officer and like four thousand for each sabotage or corruption officer. Okay. Um, so you, you can end up like spending more than your production like, even if you've got a significant amount every day but if you've got a big stockpile of money it's worth just like absolutely piling on agents for like one or two days um, just to do the damage before, before the person realises um, that they're being attacked yeah and just if each just stick like three agents on each of his home cities and just hit him really hard yeah Definitely, yeah, we're going to build that up. We've got loads of money um, to do it with. I was just having a look on the market. I, there was someone dominating the market with um, 
with some silly buy offers, but they seem to have gone. I wonder if someone sold me a load. I, I put a, a buy offer on for supplies, um, and it doesn't seem to be there anymore. So I think that's probably why I've got a bit of a glut of supplies at the moment because I, I bought a load, and we were saying the market was a bit inactive, weren't we? Um, but it looks like the supplies market's picked up. So we'll have a look at that at some point. Yeah. Well, hopefully me and Tim will be able to sell you some before long. We've, we're both getting a little bit of um, an excess of some of these supplies, but we did just, we've said we want to leave it another day um, just to make sure that that's a real excess and not just like loads of empty slots that, you know, we, we just haven't filled up yet. And I, yeah, I do have three, I've got three build slots ready to go for, for troops and stuff that I want to use and then um, a build slot here I'm building a couple of f level 5 arms industries um, building a level 2 airbase in Nevers and repairing the level 2 <laughs> airbase in Paris level 4 arms industry in Strasbourg I'm building another theatre defence a frigate naval infantry so I can take a few islands and uh, me mechanised infantry and just keep that mechanised um, infantry being pumped out so I can take these cities really quickly um, we'll see what happens in South Africa. I'm just going to go on a race and see how fast I can do it. Um, there's a Sudan troop making a run for it. Oh, I've taken that territory. So one more territory each, and we've got Egypt and the north of Sudan. So we're getting there. What's happened here? I've got no one on Khartoum. I wonder if that was attacked. Must have been interesting. Okay, so um, any other thoughts from you boys? Um, hadn't mentioned before, but I have got now my I have got my submarine commander now. Oh, uh, just west of the channel. Standing by for orders. What Very did nice. you call it? Pretty big unit. <laughs> so he's got eleven attack against boats and eight against subs. <laughs> and you've called him like and subscribe. Very nice. Okay. We, we get the idea. I don't know if anyone will be watching this late into the episode for that, but yeah. Maybe should have done one of those on episode one. <laughs> but, um, no, looking good. Okay, well, that that's a fantastic update. Um, sorry I wasn't very clear at the beginning about your uh, the big stack you're against, Jonathan. Um, but yeah, good oh. luck with that one. It's um, You'll get there. It's, um, you know. So, um, okay, well, it's good goodbye from, from me, and it's goodbye from them. See ya. See ya. Over and out. <laughs>